Hello and welcome back to PAX Oz Online for 2021. Uh, my name is Edmund Tran. I am the managing editor of Games Hub. Um, and today we are having a fireside chat with Dinga Bacaba, the game director of Deathloop. How are you, Dinga? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm wonderful. And I'm much better now that I get to talk to you for about an hour. Um, cool. So. <laughs> So um, we'll just have a really casual chat and touch on some of the the design points of uh, Deathloop and talk about it coming together and what how how you made such a great game basically. Um, so I guess first of all, like congrats on such a successful launch. Um, I'm kind of wondering how the reception met your personal expectations and the expectations of the team. Oh, it was um, yeah, it was better than we expected. Uh, definitely, we are uh, we are quite happy with um, with uh, how the community has. Uh, uh, receive the game and what they are doing with it and the way are, what they are doing around it, uh, yeah. uh, the conversation. So yeah, it, uh, I would say it exceeded our expectations, um, both in terms of, of, of again, the, the, what people are, are, are saying and the, uh, the community around the game and uh, the reviews that were, uh, again, better than we expected. We did um you know we, we 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 always knew we wanted to make something special uh but we didn't know um how much it would be to the taste of uh, a large audience uh to be honest like that was something we were because it's it's strange on 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 some aspect we wanted to make something more uh, um uh more accessible uh and on the other hand it might be almost complex game to date uh so you know it we never knew if we, if it would uh uh where it would lean uh, between those two uh the, those two as those two uh, aspects and actually yeah we're pretty satisfied to see uh um i, I think I, I think for the team the, the the two three first days of uh you know uh, when the review started to come and the game was out were almost uh, unbelievable to be honest yeah, and some really great reviews have been coming out for sure. I mean, I mean, you guys must have always known you had a good game on your hands. Surely, was there any, ever any doubt that you had made like um, something that was below your expectations or anything like that? Actually, yes. Uh, really? I mean, I mean, in general, I, I would say that uh, making such a complex and long project, like a triple A AAA game, like in general, even yeah. even an indie game, to be uh, quite honest, a video game. <laughs> um is such a journey and you're going through so many valleys and 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 rifts and 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 you know uh, mountain tops to climb and it's such a journey and uh um i'd say that there is some uh on all projects there is a uh a, a valley of despair at some point uh and for this project it it was at various moments because as you can probably see, having played the game, it's tightly knit together. And uh, for those types of experience, when there is only one part that is online and not the other parts, it means nothing. It, it, it's not even that it's not fun. It means nothing. People don't just uh, understand. So it took a while for even the team to really grasp what we were making together. Uh, and then play testers, same thing. Uh, and uh, through... A lot of iteration, a lot of constant uh, improvements, and 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 you know, uh, uh, taking the feedback at heart and uh, uh, hard work. Uh, uh, we started to say, okay, we have something. But even that something, uh, I guess, we were from the start expecting. Um, how can I say that? We said some people will love this. Like this is this is, this is uh, a bit original. Uh, a bit special it has a voice uh you know in terms of of the tone and the mood and everything it has a uh an art style that is a bit distinct so overall we said okay some people will love that they will love the lo novelty uh but how big is that group like how much of the community is that like it might be 10 people who will love this game like the you know uh uh, a cult classic and, and the rest uh, might just, uh, you know, uh, not care. So uh, that's some doubt that we were struggling with during development. Uh, and to be honest, it's not just for this game. It was the same for Dishonored. It was the same for Dishonored 2. Uh, we 
or we make things that are complex and, 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 and unique and, and you never know uh, uh, to an extent if it, if it will come together at the end. That's the, that's the, the, the fear. I, 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 you know, um, uh, something that, that, that Raph Colantonio said when I joined that I always keep is uh, until the very last second, you can make a bad choice that will ruin the entire thing. Or you can have like a technical issue that appears at the last moment that is un impossible to manage or uh, uh, for launch. And like a number of things can go wrong. Like if we're honest, like a big list. And uh, until you're out, you're not uh, out. <laughs> That's yeah, the, definitely. Uh, the, 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 the fear of the last month um, is definitely uh, present. But to be, on, on the other hand, um, I guess toward the end, we were more confident in the game than we were uh, in the middle uh, of the development. Definitely, like especially, I guess when I was able to just sit there on my TV and, and play the game here on a, uh, you know, a PS5 kit uh, at home and... Uh, uh, and not on my computer screen. Uh, it, it was immediately different, um, and I had a lot of fun finishing the game uh, alongside the, the previewers. Uh, uh, around that time, I finished the game. Uh, I finished it again when it uh, came out, and uh, yeah, you you start to consider what you've done and what works, and uh, and uh, and playing it as a as a as a player and. Uh, and that's that's definitely a moment where we were like, okay, we have something. We have something special. Will people like it? We'll see. But at least we we think it's special. Yeah, definitely. So you touched on a lot of really awesome points there. Um, so I'll try and um, pick them all back up. But one of the things you said was that um, and something I I think of when I think of arcane arcane games is that. People who love arcane games really love them and will replay them yeah. over and over again. But they're, they are in some way, um, some people just don't get them. Um, mm -hmm. But I think Depth Deathloop is, is definitely different. I feel like the audience for Deathloop has broadened somewhat. I, you know, you know, everyone, a lot of people have been saying it's arcane's most accessible game yet. Um, what do you think are the sort of the big reasons behind that? If you believe that at all. Well, um, no, I can I can see that. Uh, I would say that uh, the subject matter, first of all, um, is something that grasps the imagination immediately. There's one day that's repeating mm -hmm. over and over, uh, and you're trapped, and you have to kill people to exit. Uh, that that's something that I guess might be a bit more uh, uh, immediately intriguing compared to. Uh, you know, uh, some of the, 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 the high level one sentence of, of, of something like Dishonored or, or, or Prey. Uh, so that helps to, um, for people to start, oh, I'd like to know more about it. Um, I know there have been some jokes around this, but uh, the marketing for this game, honestly, uh, the fact that we've seen this game uh, enough, that people know, knew it was coming, uh, that people were intrigued, uh, we tried our best to manage the uh, don't say too much, but say, uh, you know, but at least that, that was the goal, basically. Um, intrigue people, show the cool gameplay, uh, let people get a taste of the, 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 the narrative uh, voice of the game, the humor, uh, the music, like all those things uh, that are so important for this game. Um, and I guess uh, to an extent, it's, it's funny because to an extent people knew where, what they were getting into but they didn't know the shape of what they were getting into if that makes sense like that that's that's so that was very interesting to uh, uh to see people unpack that but uh yeah i think uh so anyhow subject matter the the I, i'd say the marketing i'd also mention the um um the tone, it's a fun game. It's, it's colorful. It's, uh, you know, stylish. Uh, there is a lot of swagger uh, to the, the character and the, the entire audiovisual uh, part of the, the, of the game. And uh, uh, I guess that's attractive, especially in a period where we've had two years of, of, of shit uh, <laughs> uh, in the world, if we're if we honest. So uh, it was nice to have something that makes you smile, even if there is some dark... Uh, uh, parts and uh, you know uh, uh, fiction behind it. It, it. it is something that looks fun and and and, and hopefully that that was uh, appealing. And uh, lastly, uh, not 
a structural difference, but uh, maybe a maturity in our studio, uh, in our team, when it comes to taking feedback and trying to make uh, some of the most complicated part digestible. Uh, uh, so that was a journey, by the way, uh, that, you know, <laughs> when, you st when, when you start the game, like it, there was a moment during this development where there was much less guidance, uh, especially in the beginning. And, uh, and this entire first loop of, you know, introducing things wasn't there. And, uh, man, the, the people were lost. <laughs> it was, what is this game? What do they want from me? Because, yeah. you know, and, uh, I think it's, uh, something where, uh, um, you know, and even in the team, it was not only the playtesters, to be honest. So it was too confusing. And, uh, I think we were, again, we tried to be mature about it, uh, and, uh, try to hear what worked like what was the uh it's something that uh uh we've mentioned before uh players who struggled to understand the game when they got to the point where they're like oh okay so i get it that was such a pleasure that was such a you know a, a, a feeling of discovery and being smart and 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 oh I, I this is what this game is about that i've never played something like this like this Epiphany, uh, so to speak, uh, that's what that's the term playtesters use. To be fair, um, that was something that worked, and we cannot lose that. So we cannot over-explain to the extent that you do not get this this click, you know. And uh, I, I I think that a lot of the effort there was to uh, uh, channel players toward this. Feeling uh, toward this uh, understanding uh, of of the of the the, the bigger picture, um, and yeah, and 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 I guess uh, through again a lot of version, a lot of um, uh, iteration. There, we we got to a point where I think uh, uh, it might sound complex sometimes on paper, not easy to sum up. Uh, uh, besides the again the main subject matter, uh, but when people get their hands on the controller it makes sense and it's empowering and uh uh and i guess yes that that feeling of of uh, of of that of like you know we, people talk about the power fantasy but i like that in this game there is a kind of a, a smart fantasy uh in yeah. a way uh uh like oh i'm so smart for having and of course the entire game is, is made for making you feel smart and uh um and and at the same time uh, also something that I think resonated with players and makes the game again accessible is the uh, uh, the protagonist cult is a relatable guy he, he's a charming relatable guy who just struggles as much as you in the beginning to understand what is going on and, and uh, uh, is happy of any success and is uh, kind of takes any setback as uh, with philosophy and with uh, humor and uh, um, and he de-dramatizes things uh, in a way that makes players feel comfortable from the start discovering this strange world and, and this uh, strange game, if we are honest. <laughs> yeah, Cole is about like the perfect vessel for the player who just is just has no idea what's going on. And I just love his interactions um, with, with Juliana. And I, I, like you said, I think that a lot of that is what, kind of what really um, keeps you going, like, uh, keeps you going through the game and makes you enjoy every single loop, even though you're doing the same thing. Um, uh, I, I guess my why one big takeaway um, from Death Loop is that this really feels like you know the arcane philosophy, like um, refined and really focused. And as you said, you know, um, guiding plays into sort of learning what um, what the signature arcane uh, style is and sort of the game design that you guys do well. Um, and I, I feel like this is a perfect first arcane game because it teaches you like how to be creative, mm -hmm. how to use your tools, like how to be clever about a situation, um, t t showing you all the options. I mean, um, what was, I want to ask what the genesis of the Deathloop project was. Was it to, um, to, to hone in on your style and like this, or was it tied to that at all? I mean, actually, that's a, well, that's fun. Like, the, you know, uh, I guess, uh, when we're ready, we reveal more about uh, 
uh, some of the, 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 the first explorations for this project, uh, we need to, you know, uh, um, yeah, we need to, to first of all see the reaction, uh, patch the game, do all those things, and then we'll think about how we can uh, explain the journey because I think some people would be interested. Uh, so without going into too much details, I'd say that um, one of the first things was after Death of the Outsider, uh, we wanted to do something a bit different uh, for, as a studio, like something something new. Um, and there was a few things uh, in the industry that things we didn't touch necessarily uh, to before or things we uh, we were interested in that we said, okay, let's let's explore those things and see what could be spliced into our DNA uh, and, and see if it can make something interesting. But um, to be fair, it was really experimental uh, in the especially in the beginning. Like um, um, one of those things we wanted to experiment on was um, um, the. You know, it's something we talked about. It's the the familiarity of players with our games. Like the most, we 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 noticed a trend where people enjoy our game the most when they are the most familiar with them, which basically means generally during the second playthrough. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's a, a barrier to entry. Um, and this is something that early on we said, okay, how can we make the discovery and the progressive mastery of the tools and the levels uh, and, and, and all the gameplay systems uh, part of the main experience and the main story, not just, uh, you know, there is a meta game that makes you blah, blah. No, it's part of the story. It's diegetic. And, uh, um, and all the while, as you're progressing to the story, you're getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, you're becoming an expert at the gameplay, the maps, uh, and uh, and the rest, and uh, so that was one thing. Uh, the other thing that came uh, was the multiplayer. How can we integrate some multiplayer in our games? Like, is there a way to integrate multiplayer in our game um, and uh, uh, and still stay an arcane game? Uh, yeah. So that I, I, and and uh, so yeah, something fresh. Uh, you know, how can we make people master the, the game part of the game uh, uh, early? And, um, you know, um, um, uh, how can we integrate multiplayer? The rest were questions we asked, and but nothing as major as those, those three axes um, of re reflection. And then from this crazy experimentation, it started to take form and it started to be uh, enjoyable in the, in the first demos and uh, interesting in terms of art and the world we were starting to build. Uh, and then the project got more uh, ambitious and then a, a bit more ambitious and then a bit more ambitious and then it became a, a full uh, arcane game. So, but I, I think the value that you mentioned, back to your question about... Uh, uh, this is uh, like uh, uh, Dana Nightingale, or uh, you know, uh, campaign designer, said that she hopes this is Arkane's Bloodborne, in a sense that this is a game that makes you appreciate more uh, yeah. the, the, the former games from the studio and understand their codes in a in a very, even as a one shot, it works. But it's also a great way to encourage you to revisit those games. Uh, I don't think that was conscious. Uh, but at the same time, it is what Arcane exists for. That's the weird thing. Like we, the studio was made out of love for a certain type of game and certain design philosophy, um, and uh, and every game was a way to show to the world why we love those games and why they are relevant and in important uh, for the industry and uh, why they inspired us to become designers, uh, fin, developers, I mean, uh, uh, for a lot of us. So uh, uh, it is part of our mission statement to an extent to refine this formula uh, and, 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 you know, and bring it forward. So it was not a, a conscious necessarily a decision and goal for this project, but it is our mission statement as a company to, you know, uh, carry the torch of 
immersive sims to, uh, <laughs> to, 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 to say it in a romantic way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everyone needs to play immersive sims <laughs> and start with Deathloop if you haven't already. Um, I want to go back to the multiplayer a little bit, actually. Because, I mean, years ago, it would have been crazy to think that Ar Arcane doing a multiplayer game. Um, so I guess I want to talk a bit about sort of the inspiration of doing it the way you, you've done it in Deathloop. You know, there was a lot of comparisons to Dark Soul invasions, of course. And, you know, was, th was that, you know, speaking of Bloodborne, um, but was that a big influence? Or was it something else? Did you want to convey like a different experience um, when playing the game? Yeah, I, I guess. Uh, so first of all, interestingly, it didn't start uh, with the um, uh, invasion. Uh, we we explored, uh, you know, what could we do? And at some point, the the the, the, inv the, inv the invader came from uh, the setup we had with eight targets, and one of those targets was supposed to be unpredictable and found in various places instead yeah. of just one and you had to and at some point someone said what if we could play her because that would make her more unpredictable than any ai and scripting can 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 do for you and uh and and maybe it works like uh, you know i i i, I... and uh when we started building that definitely immediately dark souls came as a uh, uh, one of the 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 the, the, the references uh, not necessarily in what it creates in terms of interactions between players, because it's a lot of fencing and dueling um, to an extent. Whereas for, for, for Deathloop, we wanted to bring more, okay, we, we have the same idea of here is a disruptor to your single player experience. It's someone smart and capable and with their own loadouts. Um, you know, uh, let's, let's see how it goes, you know? Uh, and, and Fights in Dark Souls are very smart. Like this is not uh, just a, a, a skill contest. You also, you know, faint and, and, and play mind games and uh, uh, you know and use the environment. Uh, and like there is a number of, of aspects to it that that, that makes it a super scary but memorable yeah. uh, experience to be invaded or to invade, uh, there is this kind of, ah, <laughs> uh, you know, like it feels uh, devious in a way. So that was definitely a feeling we were going for, and that was a great reference. But as for the interactions, the goal was, it is not just about combat. You will interact with everything that we have in the game, in the single player, like all the the the, 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 the NPCs, the, uh, uh, you know, the hazards, uh, uh, the, the, all the systems, like the, the, the hacking of court and what it does. And like we tried to make sure that the encounters were resolved in a death loop way, not in a suddenly you're playing a different game because you're invaded. That was mm -hmm. very key. So, uh, and uh, I think the one versus one uh, uh, with goals that are not just necessarily killing each other. Uh, is a good formula for us because it allows you to play both roles as if you're playing an immersive sim. You're not playing a fighting game suddenly. That's that 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 was definitely what we were going for, and the relief when that's how play, people have been playing uh, uh, was immense because uh, uh, due to the the COVID situation, uh, there was not as much play testing. It was not as easy to play test multiplayer as it was. Uh, it, it, it might sound counterintuitive because like, yeah, well, but everyone's at home, right? So, but all the, you know, the protected network things mm. and, and, and like, it's, it's, it's just, uh, uh, more complicated, but, uh, we trusted our instincts. We tried to have each of those sessions, uh, that we did count in terms of getting feedback and, 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 uh, improving and our programmers have also done, uh, uh, you know, a great job at uh, uh, making such a complex um, uh, bed of game systems uh, replicated over the network. Like that was a lot of work to just even make technically an arcane multiplayer game work, you know. But interestingly, this is not the first time that we're toying with multiplayer at Arcane. Uh, we have uh worked on something that never shipped but was the the multiplayer for um uh, uh spec ops the line uh it was something that didn't ship but we worked on something like this and uh also and more but maybe more key uh 
uh, Arkane tried to, uh, you know, to get a publisher for a game called The Crossing, where you played as uh, an assassin in Paris, and uh, at key moments and key areas of the campaign, you would be uh, attacked by a SWAT team trying to, to, to kill the assassin. And those four people were actually players. Uh, so it became a, a PvP match, and then you go to, you continue your single player level, and then bah, there is a multiplayer arena. And that game, uh, there is a playable, of course, uh, prototype uh, at the office. Uh, uh, and uh, it was announced and everything, and it never uh, came uh, became a reality. But that was already something we were toying with. And uh, as you can see, there is some common uh, ground yeah. here. I would say the main difference being um, the asymmetrical nature of the crossing, uh, four versus one, meant that you were not playing the same game. On both of, on, on either side, like on one side it was a team-based hunting uh, FPS, and on the other side it was you're playing an arcane game using stealth and, and mobility and, 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 and gadgets and shit. So uh, that's that's something that we didn't want to do this time. This time we wanted to have a little bit of asymmetry, um, uh, which is Juliana has the NPCs on her side, Colt has the hacking device, Colt has three lives. Uh, Juliana has only one. Uh, Juliana has the disguise uh, of the, the masquerade power. Uh, and the goals are not the same. Go uh, Colt is trying to, well, do whatever he was doing when he entered the area, which might be killing the target, which might be getting a document, which might be exploring um, or grinding for, you know, objects or whatever. Uh, and uh, Juliana is here to eliminate Colt, but her progression doesn't only... Uh, progress from direct kills. It progresses from doing power combinations and surviving and 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 using and you know doing various things. So it, it's not just the confrontation. And even more interestingly, you can avoid this confrontation entirely as Colt by uh, hacking the antenna and extracting from from the the, the level, which uh, makes it uh, more of a a cat and mouse uh, thing uh, than the crossings, which was, uh, you know, uh, a kind of predator situation, you know, uh, a squad yeah. and, you know, uh, super agile and, and, and stealthy uh, uh, killer. So, yeah, um, hopefully that answers the question. Sorry, because I... Yeah, went. totally. And if you haven't already checked it out, there's a there's a great um, documentary from No Clip and Daniel Dyer about Arcane's um, cancer project. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Um, but speaking about experiments, I guess you might not be able to answer this, but I want to ask about any um, sort of changes or design experiments that you tried with Deathloop that you ended up dropping that you know that just didn't work. Um, so there are quite a few. Uh... There is one I'm not yet ready to talk about. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll wait for the no clip on that one. <laughs> uh, but um, there is a ton of things, honestly. Like there is always a ton of things. Uh, there is some narrative systems that didn't work or didn't work uh, the way they were initially uh, thought uh, that we had to revise. Um, there is this. Um, I mean. I, I, I brushed over it earlier, but the entire philosophy of the game was you don't know what to do and you have to figure out what to do in the beginning. And we had to let go of that that, that goal because uh, uh, it was... Uh, but it, the game was, in, uh, you know, uh, uh, designed to be like that, to be like, this is entirely up to you to find your goals and accomplish them and find how to accomplish them. And as as sexy as it sounds as a designer or maybe a, a, you know, um, a very hardcore immersive sim fan or a, you know, a journalist that wants you know, uh, even more extreme uh, creative ex expressions of the medium, uh, it, was, it just wasn't working. Like that, that, yeah. that didn't work. Like for a number of reasons. Like, and, and, and it's crazy. Actually, it is crazy how much it doesn't work because you might be like, yeah, well, it might just be a bit more difficult. Maybe if you made the tutorialization differently, it would be okay. No, it was 
worse than that, like people were afraid to explore because they were so uncomfortable about what their goal was. So it, exploration became drunk walking, which is a term we have in Arcane for just walking around the levels and clicking on everything, trying to have something change. Uh, and um, uh, so that was not good. And uh, uh, people were afraid of combat. People were ex afraid of experimenting. People were afraid of failure, which is the biggest failure you can have in a time loop game, making the player afraid of failure. I, having a sting for failure, losing something is okay. Uh, but uh, being afraid, making people cons playing conservatively in a time loop, like that, 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 that couldn't be, uh, that, that didn't work with the aesthetic of the game. Um, so getting to this place where you feel like, uh, so anyhow, letting go of that less guided version. Uh, this is more quantity, but it's fun to imagine that, you know, you have the main story and then you have all those little, I don't like the term side quest, but small stories or, or, or challenges all around the island, like all those small things uh, and mysteries sometimes. And those are not guided, by the way. A lot of those are very actually tough nuts to crack. Which those was, delivery uh, boxes. I still don't know <laughs> what they are. And that's 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 not the, that's that there is some bigger mysteries there. Uh, the 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 spy nest, for instance. Uh, yeah, people who have completed that might. Like, yeah, that, that, that was interesting. But these, interestingly enough, uh, were actually... Um, um, they were t twice as much on paper at some point. Wow. And we, yeah, and we just uh, cut uh, half of those, uh, um, you know, uh, vignettes. Uh, because there is the big ones and there is the small ones and like there is all this production uh, thing. But overall, we did just uh, remove half of them, which is crazy if you think about it. But at the same time, uh, there is a few reasons. Scoping, of course, but not only. It was also a matter of none of those, and that's something we kept in the game. One of, goal, one of the goals we had was none of those vignettes or little stories will be duplicated. It is not an open world activity that you just have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, oh, what, what's the term? Like in, in French, I know the term, I don't know how they call it in English game design term, like workshop. Like a, a long time ago when people were talking about, uh, you know, 3D plat platformers, there was a term that was uh, an atelier workshop, which is, this is a small area where you have a little bit of fun and you unlock something and then you move to the next one. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and, and we we wanted uh, we, we wanted to make sure that this wasn't copy pasted, so that's why there was a ton, but that, and and each one was different, and, and that was cool on paper. But in practice, um, I think it would have impacted the quality and sometimes the depth or the the flexibility of some of those vignettes. Like there is a guy uh, in Updam that goes into a cannon and shoots himself. Uh, you know, uh, just to see what it does uh, uh, without a parachute, obviously. Uh, and uh, this vignette, for instance, has a lot of little flexibility around it of things you can interact with it and sometimes even have a little cool little consequence. Uh, and I don't know that we would have been able to just go a little deeper, even on the small things like this, if we had twice as much. That's the the, the realization, uh, scoping, and then making sure we do this uh, with a, a level of quality and 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 in an intricate way, uh, so that it's uh, you know it's uh, it benefits the entire experience. And then there is yeah there is all those things. Um, um, but uh, I would say though that for this game. Even though in quantity and in some of the, the philosophies and the, yeah, there is a lot of components like this that, that, that definitely uh, we didn't keep for the game. Um, I, I, I would say that um, uh, this is a game where um, we identified quite early some temples uh, in terms of this has to work and this will not get cut whatever happens uh and we should 
make it work even if at some point we hate it. Like it needs to be good because if we start changing those things, it is a, a you know a Jenga game where if you just pick the wrong tile, it is a, it will all crumble and it will be very complicated to rebuild. So yeah. uh, we had to you know and, and and that's things like you know the four periods of the day, uh, you know and four areas. That's a, uh some of the the the, the progression systems uh we, we it, it was like a conscious choice to say yeah maybe now with the feedback we could do something different but we won't uh and we will instead uh, make it work uh because uh, else it's ch it changes uh, too many things in cascade so being um and that was not the easiest part of my job as a game director um to say, yeah, 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 I understand. It could be done differently or better. But if we want to ship this game one day, <laughs> uh, we will keep this as is, but we will improve it by every mean necessary. And if we cannot improve this, we will improve everything around it to make this shine more, uh, which is uh, how we did things uh, since I arrived at Arcane. Uh, you know, when you're making all those ecosystems. Sometimes it's not about that one thing. It's about everything that talks to it. Um, you know, uh, uh, actually, yeah, and, and sometimes it's just uh, changing the spotlight uh, on, on a feature, saying, OK, this will, we will just reduce its importance so that it's acceptable as it is, and it's even good. But if, we had, if it had too much spotlight on it, uh, then it would be uh, a problem. Like, actually, I have an example for an, from another game um, that was uh, very enlightening for me as a, a game designer. Uh, it's um, uh, Oblivion, I think. Um, in Oblivion, uh, the Lost Scrolls Oblivion, um, they had the horse, and uh, I think it, I wonder if it was Oblivion or Skyrim. I think it was Oblivion, and. Uh, uh, as you know, the horse is not a perfect feature by any mean. Uh, it has a... Uh, uh, but, I mean, it, it, it came a point during development where there was the idea to put your uh, stuff in them, uh, in, you know, like your uh, equipment, like being able to have your horse be a, a mule uh, to some extent, so you yeah. could put your stuff. The problem is horses die, horses get lost, uh, horses glitch, and people were having uh, were rating the horse poorly apparently during development because of that. Because you make that such a vital part of your uh, RPGing, uh, being an, an additional inventory bag, and at the same time, it's uh, you know it does all those crazy things that are great on a simulation and story, emergent story. Uh, like I lost my horse. That that's that's. <laughs> That's that's super, you know, it can be a super fun situation depending on where it happened and how it happened. And it's a cool story you tell after that. Like, my horse died because, you know, she, he just ran in front of a minotaur that I was trying to kill. Like, this is a cool story to tell, right? But if you're losing your equipment, that's, that's not fun at all. And when the, uh, BGS decided to not have this uh, spotlight on the, the, the horse and just make it transportation... Immediately the ratings went up because the expectations were different uh, from the player. So, and that was like so enlightening on sometimes how to solve a design or technological uh, uh, problem. That uh, yeah, I, I tried to apply it. Sorry, I, I, I sidetracked a little bit, but yeah, I think no, it's, it's an interesting story. story for any designer designer listening. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, on that kind of note, I mean, I I heard that Deathloop really took place for four days. Is that is that true? Um, and if yeah. so, like, yeah, tell me about the decision. Like, how did that play? And, you know, tell me about the decision to pare it down. So let me explain. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know how that sounds, but that's, that's not how it worked. Uh, the way it worked is that it was the same, actually. It was four periods yeah. over four maps. The only difference was uh, the time skip between those periods was one day instead of a couple mm -hmm. of hours. So it was still four maps. The difference was that the what changed in the levels one day to the next was bigger because it's like an entire day. Yeah. So maybe an entire faction came and changed things. So 
and, and we started with that, like because four was a nice number, and let's use days, <laughs> right? Um, but um, uh, it wasn't a bigger game necessarily because it was the same. You enter an area, you do your things, you get to the next area, you do other things, and you change things, and then you line up the, the targets. Why we came to one day instead of an uh, uh, of, of, of uh, like, you know, four periods of one day instead of four days of one uh, week, uh, semi-week, was, um, first of all, uh, I think the main thing was the story that we can tell in the world will be more interesting if it is more focused on one day. Uh, because immediately, if, it, if you have, okay, I can have four days of, uh, you know, a difference between those two maps. Uh, the difference will be more extreme, which might be cool in, in terms of drama, but it's harder to see the impact of what you did. Uh, those stories cannot be as uh, intimate as the story of those, uh, you know, th th those people who make a smoking game and one of them is betraying them to... Like, this is something that can unfold over a few hours. It cannot unfold over one week. You cannot have a story like this. And all those stories would have to be more complicated, with more characters, with more... It would probably have been a bit overwhelming and... Uh, uh... And yeah, I don't think it would have been as interesting a story and also just an ease of explaining things. One day, eight targets, you know. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that sounds like four days, eight targets. Wait, are you asking me to do math? <laughs> Should I multiply <laughs> or, or subtract? Or... <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, I, I, I think that um, we... Uh, like, it might sound that it was a reduction in scope, but actually, uh, no, it was... a. Uh, uh, a change of, of uh, a mental model uh, for the for what the game is, and I think it strengthens the story. It strengthens the uh, the feeling of agency you have over the world, and uh, uh, yeah, wow, well, so. yeah. Um, now, you, now you talked about being afraid a little earlier on, and um, I mean one of the one of the great things that I love about Deathloop is that you know I'm a, I'm a safe scummer, right? If I get discovered doing Dishonored, I'm loading. So Deathloop was so good in that it really helped me sort of break out of that habit and encouraged me to sort of uh, get really experimental. Um, so can you talk about sort of the the design decisions that you like really actively made to try and break people out of this, like like the recursion and just the loop itself yeah. and Sure. I mean, uh, the, I, I think uh, as much as the time loop was initially, it's a smart way to use space and make you grow fonder of it. Very quickly, we're like, yeah, but if it's an arcane game, yeah. uh, failure and death has to be uh, uh, like, you, you know, people will expect this to be factored in more than just, yeah, you respawn like in every game, like it needs to be part of, 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 of the experience. So that very quickly we said, okay, that's that's a good mix of goals. Uh, let's let's have death be part of the experience, which is cool in an arcane game. Why not? And let's make um, like actually one example for that that I really liked was Shadow of Mordor. That that's a game mm -hmm. where death is part of the who your character is uh, as a, a wraith, uh, and uh, each time you die, it makes the world change through the nemesis system. Like people talk about the Nemesis system as being a cool system, and they're like, "But why aren't more player, more games using it?" And I think there is one good reason, which is, I mean, there is other ways to do it, but as is, it works because the protagonist dies, and time passes, and that's diegetic. Like the fact that you can say, "Yeah, those things happened while you were dead," uh, is something you cannot do in, um, you know, a Halo or Assassin's Creed. So. Uh, um, uh, I'm not saying you cannot make an amazing system without that, but I I'm think it's trademark, saying... so you actually can't. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, and uh, the 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 but the, the the don't don't get me started. But the <laughs> the the point here will be that uh, um, you know by making death um, part of the story, uh, we started to go on that road to make uh, experimentation more free. But it's not only that, it's also the consequences. Like, we've trained you with something like Dishonored, and maybe 
retrospectively, we did it uh, in a, a bit of a ham-fisted way and we could have done it differently. But our goal was you do something, there is a consequence. So you kill a lot of people, the city is a much more shitty place. That's not, it's not just to, it wasn't meant as a karma system. It was really meant as a, you know, the consequences. You kill all the guards. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, definitely there will be a bit more chaos, at least on the short term. And we're interested in the short term in this game. Uh, anyway, so, well, and um, having those consequences immediately makes players set goals that don't allow for failure sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, ma you know, for Deathloop, the fact that it's a time loop and that the entire power fantasy of a movie like Groundhog Day or, uh, you know, um, Palm Springs is that you can make mistakes. It, it is the thing that we, we cannot do in life uh, on, ev on, on anything. There are some mistakes you can't unmake, uh, and that's what makes life scary, and that makes, makes us risk-adverse uh, in real life. So, you know, thinking of, of those... And, that, and that's why it's sometimes complicated when it, uh, you're, you're toying with time loops and you want consequences for, for dying or for failure, because you have to be very careful. You, you can destroy the entire fun of a time loop depending on what the consequences are i'm okay with consequences but i i want them to be the same consequence as in edge of tomorrow where okay i didn't win this time but next time i do something different like i lost this try but i'll try again right um and uh here i guess the 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 the, the 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 really nice thing that we did is that I think that was a good choice for us was as much as it is possible to lose some progression, mechanical progression. Uh, I lost a weapon. I lost uh, you know some residuum. Uh, I didn't com I didn't complete that uh, uh, puzzle I was trying to complete. But any progress you've made in the story, so in the main campaign, in the main objective, like, like that, that long-term objective of breaking the loop, any progress you've made is never unmade because you learn something. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is progression. So if I learned the code, I will never lose that. I, I know the code now. Uh, that's, that's what we're teaching in the intro of the game. Uh, you already know the code. That's, that's something that you actually, consciously or not, uh, are telling yourself... Uh, you know, uh, uh, during the game. Okay, I already know the code. I don't have to go for it again. And getting players into that mind space of any progress you made is progress, but sometimes you can lose objects, material things. Um, you know, uh, is, uh, I think, uh, one of the things that makes you more free to experiment. I, I guess it's two things. Not giving to the player an objective that would... Close the door to a certain play style. Um, making mistakes fun. Uh, you know, making sure that when you're making a mistake, it creates a cool story you want to tell to your friends. Uh, and my friends, like my, 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 my friends uh, texting me, uh, oh, I had this nice weapon, this nice purple weapon. And, and then Julian arrived and I, I, I hacked it and I could have exited, but I wanted whatever she was carrying and <laughs> I was greedy and as always my greed is punished and, and, like that's a cool story to be texted uh, from a friend even if I was not playing the game like that, that's a fun story that it creates so you know creating this environment where failure is safe but still there is enough tension that you don't want to fail and that it makes you feel powerful when you don't fail and you try something and it, it succeeds and then having court celebrate and be, yeah, you know, uh, be your Ted Lasso in a way, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, making you think positively to all these things uh, is, I think, uh, uh, yeah, it's, I hope it's freeing. But um, um, I guess the the it could have all gone wrong if we at any point framed one way to play as the right one, mm. even subtly. Like we thought we were subtle sometimes in our, our last games, but it, it, it seems, uh, uh, you know, um, 
you know, uh, you know I, I can think of ways to do it better now <laughs> with this yeah. new experience. <laughs> I, I will say this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I was I was quite surprised to see the existence of a loop uh, the loot system when I first played Deathloop. But but hearing all that, I kind of understand why it exists now because there is that risk. And you know, if you fail, oh well, you might be able to get another loop. So yeah, really clever. <laughs> yes, that and that, yeah, exactly. Like it's I'm I, if when I get there, there is a few things here. I guess uh, personally, I. I love me a game like uh, uh, Wolfenstein or Doom, where when you find a shotgun, it is meaningful. This is the shotgun, my shotgun. But if we're going to sometimes have you lose your shotgun because uh, of the you know you died and you know it's lost, the time loop thing, can we make each discovery of the shotgun a bit special, a bit personal? Like, it's not just I got my shotgun back, oh, uh, finally. It's <laughs> I got a shotgun back. Which shotgun is it? I, yeah. I think that's, that's part of it. Like, making each encounter with this weapon I love at least a curiosity moment. Like, eh, what, what? Oh, I didn't know you could have this skin with this perk. So that's why the skins are random and the perks are not. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, it's just, um, you know, to make this feeling of discovery uh, uh, more satisfying, but also it allows our level, uh, or sorry, our game designers to uh, play a little bit with uh, um, um, you know, um, without making so many weapons that it doesn't really make sense to have two assault rifles that look different, have a different character model, animation, sound, and everything. But actually, the main difference is, uh, you know, one is faster uh, in the rate of fire, and the other one is a bit more precise. Uh, it, it didn't feel very uh, right for this game, so... Uh, but if you can say, okay, there is three tiers and the third tier can be more precise, then, you know, I can play a little bit. Instead of making two weapons, I make one weapon with variations, which is, for uh, a game designer, interesting. Uh, so, for instance, an ex a good example is the, the Limp 10. The Limp 10, when you find it, it's not super precise. Uh, it is kind of... a bad weapon and it's and it's not even reliable because it it, it it can jam so it's not even reliable and it's not really pretty and uh it's it's uh like it's like yeah this is cool design but this is all worn out like uh, i wish okay uh and i think that it's um uh it, it's then cool to say to have feedback from players saying yeah well i like the SMG, but it's not precise enough. But if we make it super precise, then it's kind of dominant from the start, and that's not what we want. But making the third version precise satisfies that, uh, you know, I want a very precise, uh, 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 you know, uh, SMG, but, uh, you know, uh, in an interesting way. And then we have the third level, the, the, the third uh, tier, where there is a random uh, perk. And that's, again, here the goal is to give the game designers the tools to create a new weapon. And if you think of, for instance, the uh, uh, rapier uh, rifle, uh, so it is a hunting rifle, precise, uh, you know, but there is one perk that makes it zoom much uh, further, which suddenly it becomes a sniper rifle, uh, but more powerful than the other one, but slower. So it's interesting. And at the same time, there is another perk that gives it explosive bullets, which we don't have a rocket launcher in this game. We didn't feel it, 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 it matched the aesthetic we were going for, like big guns, you know, metal. and But still, explosions are cool. So being able to have the, uh, uh, the rapier become an explosive, uh, uh, powerful explosive hunting rifle, Again, it makes it allows the, the the game designers to have fun and to have the gas weapon and the the remote explosion nails. Uh, uh, so it's in fact um, a sneaky way for us to create new weapons 
and 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 you know make discovery and and uh, uh, mechanical exploration of the game more more satisfying and uh, yeah, diverse. Cool. Um, tell me about the the whole aesthetic, like the the scenario and the, the '60s party concept. Was that always there from the beginning, or was there a practical reason behind it, or was it just a cool aesthetic that you wanted to explore? It wasn't always what it is. That's that's what I'll say. Uh, although from the start there was this idea of a big uh, party. That's what I'll say. There was this idea of a big party because um, it does make because well there is a number of ways to go about it, but that's how that's how we went about it. Which is if you're going to be making um, you know um, uh, a kind of eternity uh, 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 arc, you know, to be eternal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh you want it to be a nice day like you want if it is it's, if it's if it's the only day for now on it has to be cool right uh so the idea of the party or the festival came early but it has to be hellish for the protagonist so it cannot be a party that is entertaining for you or it's entertaining through its aesthetic but you kind of feel that you're missing out in a way because you're the party pooper everyone no one wants you in but at the same time you are the only one that is lucid here um and sees this for what it is it is not a party it is limbo you're just in limbo and you're you're not seeing it because you're losing your memory but since i'm getting my memory uh back for you know a, a, a little bit i can see how this is and I can't let this go on. Like, this is wrong, you know? Uh, so having this, everyone seems to be having fun uh, in a messed up way. And you seeing that saying, uh, it's not what they think makes you feel a bit smart. So I, I guess this this kind of hiatus between uh, uh, what, what, what those people think of, of what's happening and what Colt is feeling and the player is feeling is uh, was definitely something... Uh, that made the party uh, the good counterweight to, uh, uh, you know, for the, 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 for the, again, the messed up party, not the nice uh, sweet party, uh, was, was a good, uh, this feels like hell, like a, a carnival that never ends, where people die and do messed up things and, 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 and you cannot be part of it, and there is nothing beyond that. There is nothing you can build. There is nothing, no no relationship you can start. There is no, you know, uh, uh, and, and there is some dialogue, uh, like not, hopefully that's, that's not too spoilery, uh, 10 seconds of, of ear uh, blocking if you want, but this conversation with, between Colt and Juliana where she's like, I like books, you know, uh, and, and Colt is like, yeah, but have you wrote any? You know, you, because you can't. You're in the one day cycle anything you do resets so you cannot write a book you cannot make uh, anything else than a speed painting that's why art that that's why fia's art is crap yeah uh, <laughs> in a way maybe like i mean it's not crap it's beautiful but i mean that's 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 the very hyped up artist of the group like she makes colors on the walls yeah. and, and, <laughs> and, and, and and but so it, it's beautiful like you can tell she's an artist but what if she had one month to do one of those uh, portraits of, of, of uh, one of those portraits of court, like those caricatures of court that he ma she makes on the wall uh, near her room. So, you know, and the party is the right, I think the party was the right, um, because again, thematically, you're breaking the loop of a, 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 an eternal party of people who want to be young and, 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 and you know, careless forever. Uh, and you are the one who said, wait a minute, this is not life. Like, we have to move forward. So this theme of immaturity, uh, people not wanting to grow up, to face doubt, to face the maybes of life, to face the, 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 the consequences of your actions, like all those things that people are afraid of and, and keep them in vicious cycles of pleasure, 
you know, like we can all think of, like I don't want to, but, uh, you know, we can all think of, of various ways to, 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 to think about the problem. And definitely the party was the literal, the literal embodiment of this careless, I don't care for the future, um, and I want to stay young and, 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 and you know, uh, and fun and, and admired and, uh, uh, and free. But, uh, you know, that, that's a certain perspective of freedom. Anyhow, sorry, but uh, it's, 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 it's just that, um, yes, that, that eternal party was very early, but it wasn't that shape before hmm. it wasn't uh I, I and that shape where did it come from at the beginning it was a party but scary i would say it was a scary party it was more the purge uh than you know the uh, this loop and uh i guess it's uh something sebastian and at the time uh, uh, sashka uh, uh mentioned at some point which is if you're going to be living forever on an icy cold island um, you need some fun, right? You need a cocoon of eternity and fun and, 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 and you need to be able to express those feelings of, of triumph to be eternal. And So it's something that came early, but the, the, the scary part of it um, uh, was making the entire game feel too much of a downer. Uh, which is definitely not what we were going for. So adding this humor, this 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 colors, etc. It makes you a little bit choke on the fun and the the the, the pleasure and the colors, which is good. Like you're trying to break out of it. Uh, so it's 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 uh, yeah. I, I guess this uh, uh, you know um, uh, making sure that that. Uh, there was this layer of, of, of fun and attractiveness was important because when it was too scary, it was uh, a bit excruciating. Uh, in a way, Colt is trying to get away from Black Reef, but hopefully by the end when players uh, leave the place uh, and they break the loop, or well, they don't, uh, they, uh, you know, um, they feel that, yeah, I will miss it. A little bit. I will miss uh, Black Reef uh, a little bit, even if it's a messed up uh, uh, place. And I think the 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 the, the sheer sometimes naivete uh, and enthusiasm of the Eternalists—they are not all jaded and 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 and, and edge lords, uh, which which is a nice change of, of pace. Uh, and uh, I, I I like the fact that some of them are really trying to genuinely enjoy themselves and and. Uh, uh, you know, there is a little bit of personally when I went through the game. By the in the beginning, it was a, a selfish. I don't want to live through this. Uh, sorry, it's the first Wednesday of the month in French, so we have the CV sirens. Uh, I think you can hear them. Anyhow, um, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> um, but the, yeah, I think the uh, um, uh, you know, um, yeah, th th this feeling that I'm getting out of it, but I had a nice stay uh, on this island, and those people, those eternalists, uh, I want them. Like when when I break the loop, I hope they have a better life uh, than that prison they were in. So, trying to build, I, I think it also participates. The party also participates to build some empathy with those masked, uh, painted uh, uh, people. Um, so yeah, anyhow, a number yeah. of reasons for the party, but uh... yeah, awesome. Um, now, one last question before we go. Um, this question I always like to ask Des: What is the thing about Deathloop that you're really proud of that no one's asked you about? Hmm. Um, I mean, we had a lot of questions to <laughs> <there. laughs> <Dear>. <laughs> Whether we answered them or not, but. Uh... <laughs> Um, um, something I'm most proud of that. Well, um, I'm well, one of the most proud things, uh, okay, that that's a bit, uh, 
hopefully not too much of a dodging the question, but uh, honestly, um, I'm extremely proud that we um, uh, we saw it to the end that this game actually exists, uh, not just a concept that was dropped or, or, or something that was not greenlit. Um, that that's that's my main pride that it exists and it's in a, a good uh, shape. And um, like you know, it's not perfect. It's it, but but it's uh, it has a soul, right? It has a, a personality. That's not easy to do, um, and that's not something. It's something it's hard to design for. Uh, we want to make something that has a, a, a strong personality and uh, uh, that is very unique. It's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, armchair designer has a lot of <laughs> uh, ideas, but. Uh, the reality of working with a big team and with schedules and budgets and 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 and, and you know and and an industry that is evolving and tastes that are evolving all the time and technology that is evolving all the time like this is uh, so I'm extremely proud that it when it came to be and interestingly um, the question that I don't think I was asked very directly. Um, and I'm not sure I'm. Uh, it is easy to answer. Is uh, uh, how the hell did people trust you guys with making this game? Like, be it the publishers or you know, even uh, uh, to an extent the player when it came to playing it. <laughs> but uh, starting to how this, how did this even lived through all those things that uh, makes that ninety ninety percent of games never come out. Um, so the, the only thing I would say is that, um, uh, definitely the trust in Arcane, uh, and, uh, it came from publish the publisher from Bethesda, of course, but also from the players, because when we announced the game, uh, with the, that cool cinematic trailer at E3 and, uh, immediately one of the trends that we had on our social, uh, you know, um, uh, breakdown of, of how it went uh, was arcane can't do wrong was a trend <laughs> it was a trend on, on social media which is like this is arcane i trust them or this is arcane uh i i'll try it at least and like that's um definitely one of the reasons like the trust from the publisher and from the players got us through the hard discussions uh, about this game and especially a game that was developed uh you know, um, in good part uh, during a pandemic, uh, in a situation we've never faced, uh, working differently, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, having a harder time playtesting the game, all those things. So, I definitely think the, the the trust of the players and of the publisher was extremely uh, uh, paramount to the, to this game even existing. So. You know, uh, I, I really hope that, um, uh, you know, um, uh, and on the other hand, that's the other part of the equation. Because we were untrusted, uh, uh, we had to um, make it count, right? So it's a different, I think it's a different thing. But I've been in this situation twice. When I joined Arcane, uh, Raf was saying something like, uh, "If this game gets a 70 Metacritics and people don't care, I'll go do some bakery or, or, or open a pizzeria." He did open a pizzeria, though, but that's that's besides the point. Uh, uh, he did he, he did it out of pleasure. That, that's a different thing. But uh, uh, and then we so we had something to prove. We had something to prove, and that was immersive sims are relevant in the modern triple A industry, right? For Deathloop, it was a different thing. We were, we had something to prove, but it was, we, not we arcane, we game developers, this industry can succeed with something original and uh, risky. And uh, the trust that you have in, in, in developers, and uh, it, it is something that can make them uh, outdo themselves and uh, you know bring the better of your team like trust trusting people for some weird ideas of course don't go so weird that you're making the game for yourself that was a temptation 
a lot, especially on a game like this. Because, you know, it, it's kind of a admission of failure. It, when you're saying, and, and, and uh, I, I, I went through those phases myself, which is, well, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know how much people will like this, but at least uh, some people will. And, and, and uh, you know, um, I'm making something for myself first. And uh, like, that's a way of uh, dodging feedback and dodging, you know, uh, the responsibility that you have. Again, uh, maybe I'm seeing things too big, but honestly, I, I honestly felt uh, we have a chance to prove that, yes, game uh, you know gamers are uh, uh avid for new experiences and and and, and risky projects and uh, we are not the only game that we are not the only game in the industry like uh, but um you know uh, i i don't think we have for instance the street cred of uh, like we do not <laughs> by any means have the street cred of uh, uh you know uh, kojima productions uh and because they made a weird ass game uh, with Death Stranding, <laughs> a great game, and uh, but uh, it's it's weird. And uh, so okay, but what about uh, you know what about uh, uh, people who are not uh, industry legends? And uh, uh, you know, uh, so uh, it's uh, I, I think it was uh there's a number of things i cannot talk about around this aspect of uh, how this actually uh uh came to ex to uh, not to not, not why it started but why it actually got to the end uh but uh, i think that aspect trust and 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 and, and, and risk and ambition and uh, uh yeah i hope it has a positive uh, i hope the game can be a positive inspiration uh and i know that for us for as a studio, it's very validating, uh, and it uh, uh, you know it can only make us um, uh, set the bar high for uh, uh, what we're doing next. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great note to end on. I, I think Arcane really have outdone themselves, and I'm really looking forward to all the projects that um, come out of Arcane next. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to you, Dinga. Um, great job. Um, thank you so much for chatting with me. I've had a really great time listening to all of uh, your chat. Um, I've been um, Edmund Tran from Games Hub. Um, thank you for, so much for joining us. Um, play Deathloop if you haven't already, and have a great Paxels Online. Thanks.